This April, 12 hermits will stop at nothing to achieve everything. My name is Pixel Rips, and this is the Hardcore Hermits Recap. Here okay. we go, here we go, here we go. We're gonna, we're gonna do fine. Hardcore Hermits is a brand new challenge in which hermits get together in groups of three on separate servers, but with the same world seed and attempt to earn as many Minecraft advancements as they can in a fixed number of episodes. Each time an advancement is completed, that earns the team one point. So if all three team members get the Stone Age advancement for breaking stone with a wooden pick, that's three points. They're playing in the Minecraft 1.13 snapshots, so there are new mechanics to explore, new enemies to watch out for, and a whole lot of glitchy stuff. The final twist is that these worlds are set to hardcore, meaning if a player dies, they don't get to respawn. If the entire team is eliminated, it's game over. Let's meet the teams. Team NHO consists of DocM77, Etho, and B00100. Reuniting after a long absence from the Hermitcraft vanilla server, they're hoping to prove that they're still experts in the game. Explain um, Hermits on different worlds with the same scene. <laughs> okay, he's just reading it straight. He's not even putting it into words. Team GFX is made up of Good Times with Scar, Full Symmetry, and Azuma Void. These three Hermits are a well-balanced crew, with Azuma seeming confident and prepared, False being her usual focused Self, and Scar hiding in a fern at every opportunity. This is hardcore, Zuma. I'm scared. I'm hiding in a bush. You got some kind of scary things out there. Wells Knight, Biffa, and I Jevin have formed the dream team of Team Ugly Sweater because Biffa still turned up in his dinner jacket, and I Jevin seems to think it's still Christmas. But their gaming style is more down to earth than their dress sense, so they've got a fighting chance. This is a wedding suit. This is a wedding suit. That's what oh, this is. Oh, it's a wedding suit. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, Team Zit combines the wisdom, experience, and Minecraft know-how of ZF, Impulse SV, and Tango Tech. Although, thanks to a minor miscommunication, they're playing in ultra hardcore, meaning that in addition to only having one life, their health won't regenerate without a buff from a golden apple, a splash potion of healing, or a beacon. Because we are in ultra hardcore mode, so no regeneration is occurring this time. Yikes. I like that you say basically when we die, not if we die. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> We're going to break this down episode by episode to save any spoilers for towards the end. So without further ado, let's start with episode one. After disabling health regen because they're just that badass, or maybe just that bad at reading instructions, Team Zit gets popping, heading north to a nearby savanna, picking up the basic advancements for collecting stone and upgrading their tools as they go. Challenges like this have become Impulse's bread and butter, since his Naked and Scared series with Skizzleman follows a similar formula, so that might give him an advantage in this particular game. ZF and Tango have another game on their minds. I see a sheep, I see a sheep. We is are looking at you though. Oh, That's oh yeah. The question. <laughs> he is not looking at me, thank you for asking that. Gathering wool from the sheep as they go with the aim of making beds and skipping the nights to avoid mobs, the trio stumbles upon a village, digs a couple of residents into well-lit dirt prisons, and commandeers a house while night falls. Luckily, they all make beds just in time, snagging themselves a Sweet Dreams advancement, as well as avoiding too much mob contact, although when morning comes, the creepers still want a hug. Oh, oh no! Oh, why? There was bang, bang times. I heard How much bang. damage? Half a heart. While Zed and Tango get their food and rations in order, Impulse digs down in search of minerals or caves and finds something that could make or break the team's success. Oh man, oh. Up the what, what? A abandoned mine shaft. Having clarified the rules in their own words, Explain when you die. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, when you die. <laughs> the NHO set off across a river to the nearby plains, where they encounter horses, or at least floating sections of horses. After taming these glitched monstrosities for an advancement and claiming basic supplies, they start digging down for more resources. Although, we're worried that Doc might be a little too fascinated with the snapshots as he immediately tries converting the nearby zombies into the drowned, in the hopes that RNG will bless them with a trident to fight with. This is kind of a shock to the system for B-dubs, who is interested more in getting his beauty sleep before the monsters come out to play, and hasn't actually seen the drowned before. So that's a drowned that's zombie? Brave. Once they're done with the explanations and the fashion parade, Team Ugly Sweater takes a similar approach to exploring their surroundings, grabbing basic resources in the spruce forest and splitting up to dig down on the plains. iJevin starts digging for coal and iron, and Wells Knight has a pretty solid grasp on their early objectives, although Biffa seems to have got the wrong idea. I know there's also an achievement for breeding yeah. animals. Hey. 
So we should probably uh, take me out to dinner first. I mean, if you come dressed for a wedding, you should expect husbandry at some point. Making their way along the river, they come across a completely different village to the one Team Zit found, and while they're trying to locate a villager with an easy trade, Biffa unknowingly follows Doc's methods and starts poking the drowned with a stick. Two thirds of Team GFX digs down from their original location in the spruce forest, hoping to get suited up before taking on any of the challenges that require them to be outdoors. Although nowhere is safe from false symmetry's urges to prank people. I'm very tempted to do this, by the way. Oh, oh, oh geez. it's dark. Okay, okay, this is hardcore false. False chooses to explore a nearby cave and has better luck with resources, as Azuma and Scar's one wide staircase doesn't yield much iron. To help keep morale up, Scar tries to lead them in a sing-along of his favourite cartoon themes. Cat dog, cat dog, alone in the world without a little cat dog, with a wolf and a purr, a baby was born cat dog. And this seems to work, as they persevere and find the first patch of diamonds before the pair of them have even crafted an iron pick. Those first 20 minutes tick away and bring us to episode 2, which, of course, the NHO wins by default. I will win by default. We're just playing for your guys' entertainment. After attempting to wave kelp under some turtles' noses to get the achievement for breeding, a thunderstorm kicks up and the whole team goes underground in search for Stronghold, which the World Seed indicates should be nearby. Even in the safety of their cave, Doc is still not a fan of thunder. Oh god, it's the thunder, Doc. It's okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, their luck turns from bad to worse, as the route to the stronghold leads them through an abandoned mineshaft, where B-Dubs gets poisoned so badly he calls a skeleton a scientist, One rope through, get there's out. a scientist! And Etho reaches the supposed coordinates of the stronghold, only to discover it's not where he thinks it is. Everyone's mob o vision seems to be a little bit off, as Team GFX goes caving, and Azuma seems to develop some kind of creeper blindness. There's a creeper right in front of you, too. I can't see it. Oh. <laughs> After smashing a few mobs in the face and deflecting a few arrows, False gathers some obsidian while X and Scar head back to the surface to stop themselves going cave crazy. Instead, they end up getting a little distracted by the new 1.13 fish. Oh, there's fishies! Hello, I'm gonna kill you. Which Azuma decides to re release into the wild, and Scar crafts himself a land boat so he can travel in style. But wait, hasn't the sun been up for a suspicious amount of time? <laughs> <laughs> right, so. The, it should it should be night time now. Should we go underground and I'll change the time? X is apparently still on daylight savings time. Team Zit is saving all the daylight they can by sleeping at every opportunity. But remember, they're still playing without natural health regen, so they need as much rest as they can get. Tango might still be a little bit sleep deprived though, since he ends up making a few unnecessary items. No, I just made buttons like a champ. Gets spooked by villagers right. and decides it's a good idea to leave ZF in charge of the cooking. Yeah, how we did good. We did good. <laughs> This whole time, Impulse has been digging down to diamond level and has been hitting his head on his way up, so Tango dedicates himself to the task of making a proper staircase. Eventually, Impulse strikes lava, and naturally, things get a little steamy. Oh, yeah, I got hot stuff too! You two are getting <laughs> hot stuff without me! You got, you're so hot stuffless. I want hot stuff. Splitting up to go caving under their tiger village, Team Ugly Sweater grabs a shield and the advancements that come with them. Unfortunately, shortly after this piece of foreshadowing, I'm just worried that I'm going to be like in this cave mining stuff and suddenly a creeper is just going to like land behind me and like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Rip series. Wells Knight raises his shield a fraction of a second too late and gets blown up by a creeper at point blank range. Oh my goodness. Oh no! Whether it's his own reflexes or just some dodgy collision detection, we will never know. But he takes the loss well and even hangs out in spectator mode to casually troll his teammates before signing off his series for good, leaving us on a serious cliffhanger when Biffa gets into a butt kicking contest with a trident wielding water zombie. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's got a trident in his hand. Oh, and he threw it at me! The sun sets on episode two once Azuma finally re enables the daylight cycle, but either way, they've all got to make an episode three. Except Team Ugly Sweater suffers another casualty in the form of iJevin's actual footage. He posted on Twitter that his recording session was corrupted after episode two. So here's Biffa's reaction to Jevin finding their first handful of diamonds. Oh, I found diamonds. Yay! Eventually, Biffa stumbles on a ravine full of mobs, and after a few of them aggro on him and each other, another creeper almost ends the Ugly Sweater's run for good. Oh, half a heart! Luckily, he walls himself off before any skeleton snipers emerge from the darkness, and iJevin is there to back him up. They end the episode with both of them alive and well, for now. Team Zit also somehow emerges alive and well, despite, and I can't state this enough, having no natural health regen. They do have a healthy fear of caves, and Tango is spooking them by pointing out every bat that he sees. There's a bat! 
<laughs> Dude, take oh. you gotta stop calling out the bats thing, man. But at least ZF is there to write motivational posters for the other two. Your armor is running away, whereas swords can't be replaced. What? It inspires impulse enough to go on a vendetta against one skeleton in particular, and once that obstacle has been removed, they find their first diamonds, gear up with full iron armor, and are actually looking pretty confident going into week two. So what's, let's recap, where are you guys at? <gasps> diamonds! Nice! How, how's that for a recap? <laughs> recap that! And by pretty confident, we mean still alive. With an enchantment table made and some shiny iron gear of their own, Team GFX seems to be pulling ahead on achievements. After wisely planning to stick around in the overworld and complete the more domestic advancements rather than rush the nether, they fail to find enough wool to put together a bed each and decide to rush the nether. Even the zombies want you to sleep, Scar. They're already in their gold pajamas and everything. I hate these things so much. <laughs> And no doubt feeling the invisible pressure of the other team's achievements, the NHO gets down to business and sorts through the advancements they can do, which means putting the stronghold search on the back burner and returning to the surface so they can craft beds. They can dig themselves out of the mine, but they can't dig themselves out of this conversation. I'm learning so much about QB dubs just from that. Like, that says a lot about a person's character. It says, you know what it says Whoa. about a person's character? It says, this guy cares. So much. This guy oh, cares. Okay. Alas, their last minute plan to make beds comes just too late, as three phantoms swoop out of the night sky and lay waste to the whole team. All this. What was that screaming oh. sound? Oh, there's oh, phantoms! The this is it! Phantoms? This is it! That's it! Oh my god, oh, you wow. died! Can you get underground? Oh my god! No way, Doc! No! no what? We're out! <laughs> it's over? At least B-Dubs gets to finish his point about shoes. I'm but. gonna wear my bra, and I'm gonna wear my shoes. And that's that's my <laughs> argument. And these are the scores on the board after the first three episodes. We'll recap episodes four through six next week, assuming the teams get that far. This Hardcore Hermits recap has been a production of the unofficial Hermitcraft recap, written and edited by me, Pixel Riffs, with script supervision by XP. Don't forget to leave a like on this video, tune in for Sunday's Hermitcraft recap, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss future episodes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.